My excitement for the works of Ray Metzger and his predecessor Bob Miller would begin my sophomore year at Bullitt College. In an archival history workshop with Fred Burwell and Ellen Joyce, I discovered these two photographers. Metzger in particular intrigued me. He had a small file about himself, but had amassed a photographic presence in the archives like nothing I'd ever seen. Metzger's work was captivating and unique for a college publicity photographer. Metzger went on to an extensive career in art photography. What I found disheartening in my research is it felt like not many people had given care to Metzger's story. I wanted to understand him, from his talent, to his ambiguity, to his influences. Ray Metzger was born in 1931 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the son of Prussian immigrants. As a photographer, his high school years proved formative. He served as a staff photographer for the yearbook and was an active member of the photography club. His first camera would be the ever-popular Kodak Brownie. Uh, the first time I developed a roll of film, uh, I had bought a kit, a Kodak kit, and I um, set up a little table in my bedroom, and I had the red light, and I turned the, the, the white lights off, and I did everything exactly what I was supposed to do. And I went in, and I'm putting this film in the solution, and it's nothing. It's just kind of creamy looking. So I'm thinking, oh, God, you know, <laughs> another failure. <laughs> and uh, then it went, I think, through the stop bath. And the third solution was the fixer. And when it was in that fixer, the images started coming forward. Mm. And, that moment just stayed with me forever. Oh. The funny thing that happened was I went with my father out to visit his cousin in a small farm village outside of Milwaukee. And uh, I was, was, you know, we were asking what I was going to be doing, and I said I was going to Beloit College. And he says, oh, you should know Bob Miller up the street. He's at Beloit College. And he's also, he photographs for the Milwaukee Journal and so on. <laughs> he says, you ought to look him up, which I did. Metzger began his studies in 1949 at Beloit College, a small liberal arts school in Beloit, Wisconsin. Metzger's most notable achievement was his work as a publicity photographer for Beloit College News Service, where he spent a year under his predecessor, Bob Miller, and then worked on his own. Bob Miller, too, was a very talented photographer. After serving as a photographer for the Army Air Corps during World War II, he came to Beloit College as a freshman in 1946. While a student, he took hundreds of photographs for the Beloit College News Service, including one of the college's annual Grease Pole Fight that appeared in Life magazine. As a senior, he mentored the younger Metzger, showing him many of the techniques he had learned while working for the Milwaukee Journal. They would remain friends in the years after Beloit. In December of last year, I met with Bob Miller's wife, Ray Miller, in Green Lake, Wisconsin. Ray and I shared anecdotes of what Beloit looks like now and what it looked like to go to school there in the 1940s. She shared with me an anecdote about how her husband Bob received 25 cents an hour for photography, while she only received 10 cents for helping in the dark room. But that at the end of the day, the dark room was the most important part of this photography process in the 1940s. She also shared stories with me about ration books during the World War II days and the transition from flash bulbs to strobe bulbs that Bob had learned when he had worked with the Milwaukee Journal. Ray's stories and anecdotes and memories of her time at Beloit only further helped me understand how Beloit had shaped these two young photographers. The news service asked Metzger to photograph a wide range of campus life, from athletics to banquet dinners to theater and dance, even to portraits of professors and the college president. His photos of athletes brought to life an important time in Beloit's history. Its nationally known basketball team impressed local crowds, and Metzger's photos brought the magic of the players and the game to life. During his time at Beloit, Metzger would train under two prominent art professors at the college, renowned painter Franklin Boggs and Clark Fitzgerald. With Metzger, Boggs pushed him to venture outside the realm of photography and to seek other mediums as a form of expression. As a result, Metzger spent a vast amount of time during his senior year delving into sculpture under the guidance of Boggs and Clark Fitzgerald. Metzger's experience at Beloit College was an intriguing point in his life and in the development of his career. 
In many of his most iconic shots, Metzger drew his inspiration from the Milwaukee Journal with his isolation of foreground action against a plain black background. While he ultimately ended up pursuing photography as an art and not commission or photojournalism, the skills he learned from Miller carried him through much of his later work. Beloit College would be the only time in Metzger's life where he would pursue photography as both an artistic medium and as a photojournalist. Metzger would go on to be one of the first graduate students of the Laszlo Maholi Nagy Art Institute in Chicago. To understand who Metzger became and the influence his work had on the modern photography community, I traveled to New York City to meet with one of Metzger's longest serving representatives, Lawrence Miller. Following my visit to New York, I would interview Keith Davis, senior photography curator at the Nelson Atkins Museum in Kansas City, and the author of the photographs of Ray K. Metzger. Uh, he can be very funny. Uh, I saw him do some really silly things uh, for a while, but, uh, but very caring. Uh, I think he really cared about the underdog. He, you know, if you look at his pictures, and look beyond how well constructed they are. It's always about the common person, somebody walking to work or somebody, just a lay person in the, in the urban scene. He was never about a certain one thing or a certain subject matter. It was always, if I can do this, then maybe I can do that. And in a way, uh, I see his career as kind of like a pendulum where he will do very abstract work, like in the 60s, these big composites, like we have a big one hanging there, which are very abstract. There's people in them, but they're playing like minor roles. And then the next, and then after that, for a few years, he started feeling a little guilty, like maybe he wasn't really showing enough care for the human being, and then he would go to the beach in Atlantic City and do that series Sand Creatures, which are really all about people just melting into the light and just revealing themselves. And from each series, he would learn something about life, about picture making. So you can really see his career kind of going like this. So he wasn't just this way, he was both. And he just kept building and building and becoming more powerful and a more uh, subtle artist. The exciting thing for me was, what can you find, discover, in what most people are walking by and mm -hmm. Uh, rejecting or dismissing. So that's always the kind of the, the excitement when that happens, when you say, this is such an ordinary thing, but look at it, it's a mm. photographic print, you know? It's, <laughs> it, it's what just keeps it going. It's, it's what feeds the, uh, you know, I, I, it's, feeds the artist. <laughs> That's what you get down on that path. Uh, I think Ray never felt that he finished using black and white. He never felt complete. There was always something more to explore. Because I asked him that. And I tried really hard to find his color photography. And I think to Ray's benefit, he isn't topical, meaning a lot of people are photographing their gender group, or their this group, or their that group and it's relevant to now, but those stories will be absorbed and we'll have new stories and Ray will always look like Ray. So it isn't narrative driven, it's visually driven and I think that's to his credit. He understood the tools of photography, the means of photography in, in a really exceptional way. And then the content of his pictures, um, you know, strikes me as just very universal. It's very much about a larger human condition, uh, an almost kind of existential sense of, um, you know, what does it mean to be alive in the world, um, you know, in the 20th century. Um, they're all about something very specific, but they're, they're all also very open-ended, and um, uh, they, they invite us to use our own imagination to um, fill in various narrative gaps or whatever. Um, he didn't talk just for the sake of talking. He talked to convey some real specific idea, and that was that was pretty clear. So everything he said was was very very much worth hearing. Ray's work is powerful. It's visually powerful. I mean, when we do art fairs, we do exhibitions. 
Ray's work just sta stands off, comes off the wall like that. I mean, people know. It doesn't look like Harry, it doesn't look like anybody. And there's, there's a real authority to his vision, to the precision of his vision, and the level of craft. Uh, I think that's one reason why Ray is almost a throwback because uh, everybody's having their prints made by labs now, everyone's hiring craftsmen to do their work. But for Ray, it was always, uh, Ray would never let anyone do his work for him. I wanted to understand from two people who knew him well what they thought Metzger's legacy would be and how has he shaped photography. Just a, a, a really singular, explorative, uh, underestimated uh, mid-century, mid to late 20th century visual artist who remains impactful and dynamic. And I think to Ray's benefit, he isn't topical, meaning a lot of people are photographing their gender group or their this group or their that group and it's relevant to now, but those stories will be absorbed and we'll have new stories and Ray will always look like Ray. So it isn't narrative driven, it's visually driven and I think that's to his credit. One of those photographers that, that I think was always a couple steps ahead of the audience and that was both a tribute to his remarkable, you know, artistic gift and to his, uh, you know, need or willingness to just keep pressing forward. So um, I, I think at the end of the day, it's a monumental body of work that um, will never be as popular as an Ansel Adams or a Diane Arbus or what have you. But um, it's, it's, a, it's a really important, really unique, um, groundbreaking body of work that, um, that no one else did. No one else um, came close to doing what he did in those decades. Ray Metzger was a profound modern photographer whose work encapsulated what American life in the 20th century looked like, from the mundane commutes to work to the way the light hits the building in our cities. He showed people what it looked like to exist and what it meant to be a human. His meticulous attention to detail, composition, and lighting made his body of work profound and dynamic. His commitment to black and white photography, beginning at Beloit and continuing well into his career, shows the power of his craft and an appreciation for a world without color.